The Danube, a river that connects 17 European states. No other river basin in the world is shared by so many countries. It is the source of water for millions of inhabitants, as well as an important trade route, fishing and recreational zone. To protect its quality, the Danube River has been taken care of by scientists, regulatory bodies and politicians in the whole river basin. The official start of the joint cooperation of Danube countries in water quality monitoring dates back to 1985, when the Bucharest Declaration was signed. Since 1996, regular monitoring of the water quality has been performed under the International Commission for the Protection of the Danube River. After the transnational monitoring network in the Danube River Basin had been established and operated by the riparian countries. However, Danube environmental scientists kept pointing out that a survey should be performed in which samples from the whole stretch of the Danube would be collected and analysed in a single laboratory. The main reason for such an investigation would be to ensure a high comparability of results because all samples would be taken in a uniform way and variations of data between different laboratories would be avoided. The survey would also be an important contribution to the assessment of the chemical and biological water status in line with the new Water Framework Directive of the European Union. In summer 2001, the dream of many friends of the Danube became a reality. A team of 10 scientists from Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria and Romania boarded the fleet formed by the Argus and Sechenyi in Regensburg and started their six-week journey towards the Black Sea. The team followed a carefully prepared sampling plan, stopping at 98 selected river cross-sections and taking samples of water, bottom sediments, suspended solid, mussels and river flora and fauna. In total, over 140 different parameters were measured in the samples, both on board and in external laboratories, in order to assess the ecological and chemical status of the Danube River and its tributary. Water samples were taken, either by a special sampling device or pumped directly to the Argus laboratory. Some basic water characteristics, such as the temperature and percentage of dissolved oxygen, had to be measured immediately after sampling to prevent any alterations. Parameters indicating the chemical status of the water, such as nitrates or orthophosphates, were analysed on board the Argus. An estimation of the content of nitrogen and phosphorus compounds, which are called nutrients, was essential for the evaluation of the water potential in the eutrophication processes. Small amounts of biodegradable substances, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, are acceptable or even vital for the well-balanced aqueous ecosystem, while excessive concentrations lead to deterioration of aquatic life conditions. Various organic solvents may be discharged into the river as a result of human activity. The preparation of water samples for the analysis of those volatile substances required special attention to prevent any losses of analyzed compounds. Thousands of litres of Danube water had to be pumped through the centrifuge installed on the Argus to gather a small amount of suspended solid particles that float in the water. Because many persistent micropollutants may accumulate on the surface of these fine particles, their analysis reveals presence of toxic substances in the aquatic system.
Sediments were collected from the river bottom at the left and right bank of the Danube. Similarly, as with suspended solids, harmful pollutants dissolved in the water accumulate in sediments. Thus, an analysis of bottom sediments can disclose pollution hotspots in the region. To ensure a representative sample, the collected sediment had to be appropriately characterized. For this purpose, it was fractionated directly on board in order to receive a homogeneous material which may be easily compared with the sediment samples taken from other locations. To evaluate the quality of the aquatic life, river flora and fauna were thoroughly investigated. During the survey, biologists gathered a rich collection of animals and organisms living on the river bottom. Macro and microalgae attached to stones, wood and soft sediment, different kinds of water plants, algae, bacteria and floating animals were examined. Various bacteria accompanying human life on the ground are present also in the water. Any human contact with water having an elevated concentration of harmful microorganisms may cause health problems. In order to get exact information on all those microbial creatures living in the river water, all parts of the equipment had to be kept under conditions of high sterility. After careful filtering and inoculation, the colonies of microbes were left to grow to enable their determination. The net was used to sample phytoplankton and zooplankton, small organisms and plants floating in the water. Knowledge of the content of chlorophyll A as a parameter of algal biomass is necessary for the evaluation of the extent of the eutrophication process in the river. Water transparency was measured to discover how deep the light can penetrate into the water. Light is essential for the growth of green plants and it provides the energy for photosynthesis, the process by which plants grow. But not only microscopic plants were in the scope of interest of the research team. In order to investigate the diversity of species living on the river bottom, careful sampling had to be performed. Thank you. 
Algal communities, called Phytobenthos, were sampled from submerged pieces of wood, stones, and sediments found close to the sampling site. Mussels living in the river water have the bad luck that they accumulate pollutants which are dissolved in the water. Therefore, the analysis of their tissue may indicate the pollution by persistent substances. The investigation of biological communities living on the river boulders provides information not only on the biodiversity at the particular location, but also indicates the presence of polluting substances. For better assessment of specific local conditions, the cooperation of the JDS research team with the national experts who joined the survey in each country was very helpful. The preliminary analyses were performed directly on board the ship. But for detailed examination, the thoroughly preserved samples had to be shipped to the laboratories on shore. Part of each sample will stay stored for several years in the central storage facilities in Hungary and Germany. Altogether, nine top laboratories in Germany, Austria, Slovakia and Hungary analyzed samples collected during the survey. These laboratories were selected as centers of excellence for the analysis of particular determinants. Most of the sophisticated instrumentation used for the analyses could not be located on the ship. The detection of organic compounds and heavy metals at the ecologically relevant levels is similar to looking for a needle in a haystack. For this purpose, special laboratory conditions were inevitable. Gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, enabled the detection of tens of unknown compounds occurring in the Danube water, sediment and suspended solid samples. The interest of analysts was focused also on the priority hazardous substances from the European Union Water Framework Directive list. Phytobenthos samples were studied thoroughly and compared with the reference data. Over 40,000 results were generated from the analysis of samples collected during the survey. For future scientific needs, all data had to be archived in a database so as not to lose a single result. Ah, da wisst ihr es mit Frost, mit Blitz, 
Geschichtsbezogenen Ansatz der Wasserrahmen, die wir hier wir ein Instrument haben, was die Staaten des Donauraums insbesondere im Bereich der Wasserwirtschaft schrittweise auf die EU-Weite vorbereiten können. The Joint Danube Survey was not only the scientific expedition. It helped raise the concern of people living in the Danube River Basin on the environmental protection issues. Public media were involved in this basin-wide campaign for a cleaner Danube. At the press conference, local decision makers clearly demonstrated the efforts of national governments to participate in joint programs aiming for the improvement of water quality. Coming ashore, the endeavour of surveyors was appreciated by the Danube citizens. It was convincing and pleasant evidence that the environmental concern expanded from the scientific and administrative institutions to the public and the common people that shared the interest in the fight for a clean Danube. The survey was really a challenge, to keep to the tight time schedule and to pass through all the critical parts of the Danube, such as the area of the bomb bridges in Novi Sad in Yugoslavia. And in the end, reaching the Danube Delta. Time to relax, time to go home. The Joint Danube Survey went far beyond the borders of the Danube River Basin. Not only a technical exercise, a technical mission, but it was a case of cooperation between all Danube countries. And in particular, we managed with a lot of efforts and with the thanks of all who have participated also to get Yugoslavia on board. The 2,581 kilometer long journey that started in Germany on a sunny August day was over. And in front of the Argus was the undisturbed horizon of the Black Sea. All those involved in the Joint Danube Survey strongly believe that this unique crusade against Danube pollution, funded by Germany and Austria, will form a solid, long-term basis for decision-making related to the water quality in the Danube River Basin.